What is up, comic fam? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and today I'm going to be talking about ISOM number one, the highly anticipated, record breaking, crowdfunding kind of book from the Ripperverse, aka Eric July. So they're finally in. Let's find out if they are, uh, if they live up to the hype. Before we do any of that, check this out. Alright, so don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, my 1500 subscriber giveaway is underway. Go back and check out a few videos ago. Enter to win numerous prizes. More slabs get added to the giveaway as the days go by. You do not want to miss out on that. It's going to be awesome. So let's get right into this. Uh, this is ISOM, I-S-O-M. ISOM number one. It's roughly 90-something pages. It's like a trade paperback. And what this is, is a... Uh, from my understanding, I'm really not too familiar with it, but from my understanding, it's a online personality streamer, whatever you want to call him. His name's Eric July, and he puts out content and stuff. And uh, the way that he views the comic industry is not, he's not happy with it. So he decided to be part of a solution instead of just complaining about a problem. And he decided to create his own comic book. And that's what this is. And he created it, he wrote it. He had it all in the works, and after it was done and ready to get ready to be printed is when he started crowdfunding for it. So he didn't do it in the traditional sense where the book is contingent upon hitting a certain goal. It was already going to happen. So he did pre-sales once it hit a certain point, and it exploded. Like He has a huge audience, a huge following, so just from that, it kind of gave it enough steam to start getting some extra attention. It started hitting... Uh, news outlets like comic book news outlets and then it started hitting regular news outlets and it started uh, I think uh, it was when it was getting getting announced for a million dollar mark is when I found out about it learned about Eric July uh, he calls his comic company the Ripa verse that's like associated with his channel name Ripa verse and uh, I went over there checked out some of those videos about it and I decided that I'm gonna order it and see if it lives up to the hype so I've been really curious and uh i finally read it it came in today i read it today i'm recording this today to put it out there because i'm sure there's more people like me that are wondering about it so i have watched uh, two other reviews on the book before mine and uh, i felt like one of them was pretty pretty detailed and pointed but i think they're kind of be not trying to be mean here but i think there might have been a bias lean to it and then another one was clearly just a bias lean not in a bad way but you can tell from other things that they said in the video, no matter what, they're going to praise the book. But uh, I wanted to get my take on it. So we're going to, we're going to talk about that. Let's, let's get into it. So first off, like I said, the book's like the size of a trade paperback. This is a single issue. So it's looking like there's going to be like large time gaps between issues coming uh, coming out. The artist's name is Cliff Richards, and I'm guessing Gabe Eltabe is the colorist. Those are the three credited on the front. The inside paper quality is phenomenal as well like it's every one of them are glossed uh the book had like i think it had like a 30 dollars price tag on it which is kind of pricey for something this size uh kind of for comparison and i know this is a bad comparison but just a size comparison superman space age came out this past week that's 100 pages no ads in it and it had like a 10 dollars price tag this had a 30 dollars price tag but it is ridiculous quality and this is not a large company putting it out so that's cost stuff in there as well so um great cover like the artwork's cool and everything you get inside the book and uh the writing itself i don't know if eric july's written anything else before or if this is his first time diving into comics or what but the the writing is uh is par you know it's nothing exceptional it's nothing great it's definitely not bad either you know just trying to be honest here it's exceptionally par uh there's there's moments in it where uh like uh, it's very clear and defined and there's moments in it where is kind of hokey even you know like some of it you have to read over twice because it just doesn't flow necessarily great in every situation there's a couple of editorial misses on the writing end uh just just to point one out uh right there it'll uh be a message for all my history with them gives us in a, like that that whole bubble there like is just jacked up from front to back and so there's a little Little things like that where editorial miss something. So that's not necessarily on the writer. That's on the whole team. But that, that's forgivable. The the story was concise, at least the primary story. We'll get into that here. But it was it was written good enough from what I would expect 
from a self-published indie book, even on the little higher to better. If I had to put it on the scale, let's pull up the scale. There, there it is. So green being the best, red being the worst. I would put the writing about right here. Like better than halfway, like teetering between the top of yellow and then yellow green there. But it was it was fine. Uh, the artwork was good. It was uh, it was what I'd also expect kind of from an indie book. I've seen worse in the top two companies. I've seen better in indie comics. So it's, it definitely fits right in. I've got a couple of panels of the art here that I can share and show. So for one of them, uh, the character designs, we'll get into that. <laughs> but for uh, some of the some of the fight scenes were really hard to get through, in my opinion. I'm one of those people that the, the fluidity of the comic is a big deal. Like as I'm reading it, I don't want to be taken out of the story because I have to stop to assess what I'm looking at or assess what I'm reading as I'm reading it. It should flow very smoothly. But one of those uh, one of those panels, yeah. So there's a good good sign of the artwork. Uh, it, it's crisp and everything. The colorist kind of had a field day on this book. It seems like there's like a lot of backlighting in all the stuff where there's heavy shadows on what you're looking at. But uh, as you can see, like from panel to panel there, he, he apparently dodges a punch, kicks him in the back. The dude sits up, they square off. And then in the very next panel, they're flying through the air, backlit like you're reading a manga or watching like Dragon Ball Z or something. And then the very next panel, they're just like away from each other with skids on the ground. So there's... There's a lot of stuff like that when it comes to the fighting where it's just not fluid. Like I would definitely, if I was Eric July, really check the writer, uh, check the artist on that kind of stuff. Like it, it needs to be cleaner than that. Like, it, like especially moving forward, maybe not for this one. It, it definitely gets a little bit more of a pass. But moving forward with it being such a success, you got to up the ante. You got to really tighten things up, bring a higher, higher, reach higher expectations with that kind of stuff. But. Uh, the regular panel to panel stuff was fine. Uh, there was almost like a JRJR moment in a few of the panels where it looked like mailed in when the people like in the, the supporting cast in the panel just didn't have faces almost. There were some of them that were just, just really, really rough McGruff that it actually caught my attention. That was early on in the book and it kind of, it kind of worried me for a second. I was like, I hope this isn't going to be like this. Yeah. When we first get into like Darren, the bad guys hide out like his cronies that are around him or just, there's some of them that just look. Let me see. You don't get that. Like Buddy right there just looks a little rough there. Just, but that kind of stuff again, it's, that's nitpicking. I'm just trying to hit like all the details that I can think of. And I'll tell you why. And in, uh, in the back, they ask you to do this. They absolutely want to hear the feedback, the positive, the negative, all that, which I, I think is awesome of them to reach out and say so. Uh, some of the character designs, uh, I like the Isom suit. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's no explanation to it whatsoever because we don't see it until the very end of the book. So it's pretty straightforward suit, but there are a couple of little things on it that you'd wonder why it's there. We don't get a much explanation to really anything, anything at all. And uh, this is kind of, it's not his origin story, it's his re-origin story. It's like his return to being Isom. Apparently he was a super, which are called excerpt, excepts in this universe. And we meet a few of them along the way. So this is where the story gets a little hokey. So you have our primary story where we follow Avery Isom, who gets a random call from his sister. He works on a farm uh, where real work takes place. This was almost like, felt like maybe an intentional inclusion in the book as a nod to your Midwest audience. Like y'all, y'all are the backbone of America kind of thing. And he's working on a farm and he gets a call to come investigate this employee of his sister that went missing because... It's Miss Newman's daughter. They don't ever tell us why Miss Newman's important, how she's affiliated with Avery or his sister Altona. Altana. There's a lot of odd names in here that just, it's like, all right, this is, am I even saying it right? I don't know. But he goes to investigate it because she could be tied up with an old gangster buddy of his and it just goes south. His pride gets in the way and he just keeps going back to fight the guy because he can't let his pride get get the best of him he has to he has to go one up this guy but basically the book ends with him not one upping the guy and going to get his suit because he's tired of his clothes getting ripped up but along the way we get a couple pages in the beginning with no explanation no reason for it to really tie into the book where we get introduced to this character who's obviously going to be an important one yara 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 one of the three y-a-i-r-a -A. yara but she's fighting with the police. We don't know why whatsoever. 
and in the midst of fighting with the police, uh, these people show up. Alpha Corps, which I think is a really cool name. And these are apparently accepts that work for the police to help keep the peace. And their names are Braxwell on the far left there, Brian Solari in the middle, and Ingrid Valdez on the right. Ingrid had some like uh, energy whip kind of things. Not sure what the powers of the other two are. But we get introduced to the Alpha Corps. They get mentioned a couple of times in the book, like they're peacekeepers and everything. And even in the front that they haven't had to be activated in a while. It's like the the ex excepts are kind of dormant. But then in the back of the book, after the story wraps up, we get a couple of uh, a couple of teaser pages, I guess, for what's coming next. You see a band playing just on random in somewhere near Florida. And then uh, they have some really, really questionable odd lyrics. I don't know if there's some kind of message behind that or something we'd have to wait to find out. But as we turn the page, we see that they're both excepts. One of them kind of hovers up in the air and starts glowing green like the like green flame around him. And the other one kind of materializes a bow. And they're kind of talking like the world don't know that, that they're here, that they don't rare, they rarely have to interfere in world events and stuff. So I guess it's just like a tease for what's coming. And I guess that's the same thing with Yaira, and the same thing with the Alpha Core. The story just kind of just kept throwing these random things here and there into the book. So I'm sure it's all just stuff to expand this universe going forward because uh, he's big on that kind of stuff. So the book as a whole, if I'm just being completely honest, trying to be non-biased and uh, I would give it maybe a six out of 10, you know, it's nothing special. It wasn't bad. It's definitely better than it is worse kind of thing. Uh, and would I, would I be in for an issue too? Yeah, I think, I'd, I think so. I would give it a shot for sure. Seeing how successful this was to see what they would do differently and step up kind of thing. And um, there are some things that kind of just bother me. I know that this is people see this as a reactionary book, and it, and it is in some kind of ways. You know, it's someone who's not happy with the state of comics, and they feel that like a certain agenda has taken over too much influence in the comic industry. Whether it has or hasn't, that's that's neither here nor there. But this is a book that didn't it didn't dive down that road. It didn't address any of that stuff. It didn't try to push back against it. It just exists because. That's how this person views the comic industry. But I I do disagree with a little bit of like his personal feelings and his message that he puts in the beginning of this book. It says, so here's something for every longtime customer that went to the comic book shop every Wednesday. That's that's me. For all the people that have watched their favorite franchises be hijacked. I mean, that I've seen that happen with stuff like there's no there's no denying it. For each person that always wanted to get into an ever-expanding universe but just didn't know where to start. See, I'm a DC hound. Like, you just get in. You just get in. You can't you can't cry foul because you weren't born in 1938. And for all of those that simply want to invest in creators that don't hate them. Bro, there's 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 not very many creators out there that hate people. There really aren't. Like, and I and that's my thing. Like with this, it's really there's so much attached to like a toxic fandom out there, in my opinion, that just get online every week and just hate on stuff just to hate on stuff. And it drives me mad because like uh, there's so much good stuff out there and that runs people away from the comic industry because they they don't read them. They just hear these reviews of people just crapping on stuff all day long. And uh, it's just crazy that people would spend their time to do that. There's definitely more stuff out there that's accessible and available to all than a very small pointed group of people. That stuff does exist. It definitely does. But I go to the shop every week. I pick up a big stack of books every week and I don't run into that kind of writing in my books. I just, I just don't, but uh, I don't want to sit here and preach about stuff, but I do want to talk, like I said, on the character designs, this book, one of the biggest things I enjoyed about it, it felt like reading a book like uh, from a different time. It really did. It felt like something from like maybe the late nineties, early two thousands. And it was never more prevalent, uh, prevalent than in the character designs in this book. So like I said, Yaira there, you can tell she's sporting the sexy outfit, got her stomach showing and everything. Later in the book, we run into the streetwalker and even Isom's sister at one point in the book when we meet her. So you have like the sexy lady look coming across and everything. Isom's suit is, is, like I said, is super cool. I don't know what the cross on his groin is all about. Uh, don't know. But uh, you had characters like this big dude he was fighting with like kind of gold teeth. It was kind of it kind of felt like uh, it felt a little bit stereotypical of the late 90s, early 2000s with like the, the gangster tropes and everything. But it was it was fun. It was definitely worth the read. Uh, I would probably I, I would probably read again. I mean, you can sit down and read it in one go. But uh, that was just my thoughts. Like I just put the book down. I'm just kind of trying to put it immediately out there. 
but I'll think on it some more probably. Might read back through it. And I'll go into a deeper review Sunday on At Weeks in my live show. But I hope this was helpful for people that were considering reading it or wanting to read it. If you have any questions about it or if you want to discuss the book, I would love to in the comment section. So leave me a comment. And again, uh, go check out that 1500 subscriber entry video. That giveaway is going to be massive, massive, massive. So many more slabs have been added since I posted that video. So we'll be getting into all that. So until next time, appreciate everybody. And as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.